The following program is produced by students of the Brian Lamb School of Communication at Purdue University. This week on Fast Track, we'll catch up with Boiler Breakers to learn more about the art of breakdancing. We'll also visit the bubble tea shops around Purdue's campus that have been recently increasing in popularity. Later, we'll check in with the men's basketball team as they near the end of their season. These stories and more are coming up on this week's edition of Fast Track. Welcome to Fast Track, where we're bringing you this week's show from the unfinished Block P statue behind Stewart Center. I'm Don Kim. And I'm Erica Lewin. Hip-hop music was born in New York during the 1970s, driven by the stylized rhythmic beats. A new dance style was also created to go along with this music. This new style was called breakdancing. Since then, breakdancing has spread around the world, including here at Purdue. The Boiler Breakers have been sharing the art of b-boying with the campus since 2005. Fast Track reporter Joseph Bauer visited a club practice to learn what about what it means to be a part of the hip-hop culture. The Purdue Breakdance Club, known as the Purdue Boiler Breakers, is showing campus that there's more to breakdancing than just spinning on your head and looking good. It's a hip-hop culture. But what does this culture really mean? I spent a week hanging out with the club to find out what the drive behind breakdancing is all about. Any dance is just like an expression of yourself, right? So you just gotta find what you like, find what fits you, what feels natural, and then it just kinda comes out. The more you learn, the more foundation you learn, the easier it is, and the more stuff you can come up with. Even the inspiration for breaking comes from a variety of places. I look at other breakers for inspiration. I look at not just break, breaking, but also like other things in life, like martial arts, other styles, like, other, like capoeira. Um, I look to like things that I like, like graphic design, for example. Um, just like things in the world, really. Just like everything around me in, like, in my life. Now, like any style of dance, breakdancing is and really needs to be an expression of yourself. But what makes breaking so unique? It's very, pretty low profile, so a lot of people know each other really well. Um, it's a really dynamic, like unique type of dance, and it really draws attention. It's really dynamic and has like a lot of movements and really crazy things that you really never would have thought of you could do. Uh, a lot of crazy acrobatics, um, spins, mills, things like that. And then creativity is like crazy with it too. People come up with like so much original stuff. Known as b-boys, every break dancer has their own reason for dancing. Purdue junior Delante Hutchins shares his reason. Break dancing to me, what it means. It's, it's a strong part of what I would like to call my own personal hip-hop culture since that's the side of hip-hop that I embrace the most. Yeah. So, and it's also, like I said, my own form of exercise. It's my own form of a martial art to me. It's pretty much my hobby, one of my happiest and greatest hobbies I have. Although there are many experienced breakers in the club at Purdue, newcomers are very much encouraged to come out and learn the style of dance. It was really awesome. I had so much fun. It's my first night, so it was really great. And all the guys are so nice and helpful, so it was great. When you start getting into breakdancing, you are choosing to become part of a worldwide culture. This culture is brought together at events called jams. A jam is like a breaking event or a competition. Basically, uh, breakers from from the region come together and they compete to see who will win the who will win the jam. Um, but Besides the competition, it's more of like a party atmosphere, just kind of fun vibes. It's not like super serious or super yeah. competitive. Um, during the battle, it can get, get get that way when it's like really, really high stakes. But pretty much, it's just party atmosphere. People are just vibing and jamming. The Boiler Breakers are hosting a jam coming up on April 4th in the Stewart Center room 302 at 6 p.m. Furthermore, the Purdue group is always looking to add new members. They meet Tuesday and Thursday evenings in either the third floor of Stewart or one of the activity rooms in the rec center. Reporting for Fast Track, I'm B-Boy Bauer. Amongst campus guitar players and singers, an artist with a distinct talent has emerged at Purdue. Harry Chorus has one of the most unique skills of people his age. Chorus says he found this skill when he was in high school during a visit with his cousin who is also a beatboxer. Our fast track reporter discovered him at an open mic night 
and decided to catch up with him to get an inside scoop on how he does it. Talent comes in many different forms at Purdue University. For junior Harry Chorus, it's throat singing. He calls himself vox, a Latin term for voice. His talent is one that has taken years to master. I guess my first like beatbox sound. I would suck my cheeks and like, you know, you make the fish face and then you got to bite down on your cheeks and you just kind of got to blow out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was like three years old, I was like running around like emulating uh, sound, a sound like that. <laughs> From race car noises to being able to layer up to five sounds, Chorus says that he's had some influence from a variety of sources. A didgeridoo from Dave Crow and beatboxing from his cousin Costa have been incorporated in making his unique sound that he's been working on since high school. I got, it, I got down where I could beatbox really well for like the last two weeks of, high, of, high, of senior year. So like right there I was just like, check it! And I was like... Dun, 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 dun. Uh, so then I, was, and then I kinda just went into like this beatboxing mode for like the whole summer, every single day for like the majority of the day I was beatboxing, just nonstop. Thinking about trying throat singing for yourself, with 11 different sounds and mastery of your unused lower vocal cords, this skill is not an easy one to develop. There's the throat singing, the beatboxing. Technically, there's three sounds going on when I'm doing the throat singing. So you get three sounds there, and then whatever beats I'm doing to the beatbox, so the beatboxing beat can be like seven different sounds, so then you're looking at uh, 11 things all merged together. And there's just one more quality that Chorus says is helpful. As a computer engineer, he is a very logical thinker, which helps him in arranging the layers of his music. If you high organize my beats, I'd have to explain to you essentially what's more like this logical structure that I've created for creating beats. Uh, so that that's why it's I'm kind of I have to like pick off pieces, and then sometimes I don't like in order for me to show you how it connects through it would just take too long for me to explain. Okay, so I'm here with Harry. He's gonna teach me a little bit about his talent. Um, he's, and I'm going to try to learn how to do this. So we're going to start with a basic one. All right. Here we go. This is just uh, a, a basic throat singing drone sound. <clears throat> <clears throat> I think that's about as good as it's going to get. For Fast Track, I'm Beth Stanley. Thanks, Beth. We'll check back in with you later for an update in sports. After the break, we'll visit the bubble tea shops that have recently opened around campus. We'll also head back to the studio to meet up with our tech specialist, Jeff Webb, for a new edition of Fast Tech. We are all boiler makers, but we're also much more. We're history makers, exploring the farthest reaches of our universe often when strapped to a rocket. We are hope makers, rebuilders of Haitian cityscapes who ensure they'll now withstand any disaster. We are difference makers, developers of drought resistant crops that just might end world hunger. The fact is, what we make moves the world forward. We are Purdue, makers all. I am an American. 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 That's the way most of us put it, just matter of fact. They're plain words, those four. You could write them on your thumbnail or sweep them across a bright autumn sky. But remember, too, that they are more than just words. They are a way of life. So whenever you speak them, speak them firmly. Speak them proudly. Speak them gratefully. I am an American. I am an American. I am an American. I am an American. One small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. 
projects that we do and, and we try and, and you, yeah, you. Have you ever dreamed of being on TV? Well, in the Brian Lamb School of Communication, we do more than that. You can learn about camera operation, lighting techniques, live TV shows, real client PSAs, weekly news productions, and more. For more information about the video production programs, visit our website or the advising office. Bubble tea is a Taiwanese-based drink invented in the 1980s. The drink's popularity has quickly spread in the U.S., especially here in the West Lafayette. Two bubble tea shops have recently opened around Purdue's campus. They have become a place for students to study and meet with friends while enjoying a drink. Fast Track reporter Maggie Jiang visited the shops to bring you an inside look. Bubble tea, also known as boba milk tea, is a Taiwanese tea-based drink that was invented in the 1980s. Now, it was introduced to the Purdue campus, and it becomes the most popular drinks among students at Purdue. Last fall, there were two bubble tea shops open nearby campus. Students have new places to hang out and meet up with friends other than coffee shops. However, before these two shops opened, Bubble tea were only served in restaurants such as Basil Thai, Green Leaf, and Oishi. I remember when I was freshman, there's no kind of store here, but it's pretty nice they have opened this kind of store here now. I love it. I come here every week, you know, to have nice bubble teas, and they got french fries and takoyaki here, so it's pretty nice. Bubble tea consisted of a mixture of hot black tea, tapioca pearls, and condensed milk. Except original bubble tea, there are also lots of variations were provided on the menu. I had the matcha bubble tea. It's really awesome. You must come. Large amount of international students stimulates the bubble tea business, which also brought a new trend among students. I opened this bubble tea house because my wife, she used to dream to open stores uh, selling milk tea and uh, dessert. As Purdue has more and more Asian students, we saw potential markets here. So it's very good for us to open a signature Taiwanese and Hong Kong style dessert and milk tea store. We are surprised so many people at Purdue like bubble tea. Bubble tea is our most popular one, but our Hong Kong style and the Taiwanese style dessert make us different than the others too. We are dedicated to um, providing the best quality of food and dessert for Purdue students. Food represents its culture. Bobo tea also represents the lifestyle of Asian countries. I'm really happy that, I'm really grateful that this place is open to promote a Taiwanese culture or Chinese culture in general that has never been promoted before. Um, this, this college town has never had that many places where they make bubble teas, but I'm just glad that they're starting to um, integrate the bubble tea culture to the American culture by opening this place. With the increasing number of international students, we are looking forward to see more different aspects of cultures at Purdue. Reporting for Fast Track, I'm Maggie Jiang. Thanks, Maggie. Apple will release the final announcement of the much-anticipated Apple Watch next week. Let's see what Kyle and Jeff have to say about the Apple Watch in this week's edition of Fast Tech. Welcome to Fast Tech. We're going to try to get through our jobs today and do what we have to do. There's a little bit of sad news. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that right now because uh, we're going to get done what we have to get done. Kyle, what's going on, man? Uh, not much. I mean, there's a lot going on in the world of smartwatches right now. I'm really excited. And wearables in general. Yeah. What do you uh, what do you think about uh, the new Apple Watch? They sent out the invitations for the March 9th date. So I'm assuming with the whole spring forward thing, that means that they're gonna. It's pretty suspicious. Yeah, I mean, it's not that suspicious though. Let's be honest. It's gotta be like you know. Yeah, it's, it's talking about time. Talking about spring forward. It's gotta be about the Apple Watch, right? Absolutely. Just in time for the people getting outside and wanting to use the new health features. Yeah, a lot of new health features in the watch, which I uh, actually won't actually get any use out of at all because if they can monitor my heartbeat, it's gonna be close to around 60 or 70 beats a minute because of how much I do, which is absolutely nothing. Um, so what, what have you heard in terms of the Apple Watch? Do you think uh, anything, does, does any of that really even interest you? 
Uh, personally, I'm not really the smartwatch guy. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little too blingy, mm -hmm. but I'm, I think it's gonna be interesting to see how Apple works with it because it's gonna set the stage for other products. What do you mean? Apple is always kind of at the front of the lines in terms of refining the experience. Mm -hmm. Like we got the iPhone and then all the other smartphones started to change their features to match. Because that really was the first smartphone, right? I mean, not you think really. That, well, but like maybe not but, smart. I guess that would go to like Blackberry, Palm, things like that. Yes, but everything that the iPhone brought to the table, which was a refined version of that, mm -hmm. it became the standard. In the App Store, obviously, you had yeah. the App Store, which was... Basically what Apple does becomes the norm. So let's go bottom line right now. What are your predictions for smartwatches and for wearables in general? I think that it's gonna be overall a pretty slow start because they're, they're premium end products that don't have quite as established a use as like a cell phone. So they kind of become an, an addition to your smartphone. But eventually I think that they'll be adopted pretty commonly. Mm -hmm. But for the first couple of years, there's going to be some some still some teething pains. Would you wear one? I'm not sure yet. Yeah. I need to see them in action first. Plus, it would just kill the hairline you have going on. Let's be honest. Yeah. That wouldn't be. Might good. get caught. It'd be painful. I think so. I've had that experience. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm okay with it. Mine are, are much less plentiful than yours. But actually, you know, I had a little problems earlier. Not the point, though. So. With Apple, basically, I think what our uh, what our conclusion is that uh, Apple is going to take the smartwatch, it's going to refine the smartwatch, it's going to bring it to the mainstream. You're going to have old people wearing smartwatches. You're going to have everybody walking around talking to their watches from now on because Apple's making their own and because everybody that loves Apple, which is like the majority of the population, right? Yeah. They're going to have to have a smartwatch and they're going to have to have the Apple Watch and they're going to have all different kinds. You're going to see the rich, middle-aged housewives with their gold 14 karat smartwatches. But that's a good thing because that means that it's going to bring it to the forefront. Nothing says love like technology. Exactly, right? So with that being said, live long and prosper, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks, guys. Meteorologist Connor Lewis is also back in our studio with a look at this week's weather forecast. Connor? Hello or aloha for a very special spring break edition of Fast Track Weather. Let's get right into it. So here we go, Friday night, some precipitation. Uh, we'll take it with a grain of salt with these warm temperatures. You know, it, it's just something to really enjoy. And you'll see that coming up in the week ahead for us. So let's take a look at the weekend. Like I said, we'll have some precipitation. Um, it'll linger into Saturday just a little bit, but Sunday, look at this. Anything you can think of to do outside, do it Sunday. It's gonna be no wind, 50s, sunny, absolutely perfect. And I'm gonna get into what we're talking about here as far as our upper air forecast. So, we have the shortwave trough coming in, bringing some of that precipitation into mainly Kentucky, Tennessee area. And then we have this high ridge building bringing all these warm temperatures up. And that'll stay around for a while. But in the majority of countries are gonna feel these very warm temperatures. And I'll get into that in just a little bit. Um, this precipitation, like I mentioned, is gonna be in Kentucky, Tennessee ma area mainly. Um, that'll be something to watch for if you're traveling this, this uh, upcoming weekend. So if you're going to Florida, going home, anything like that, Go to the speed limit, get there in one piece, that's what's important, all right? So looking ahead, some of these temperatures I'm talking about, for West Lafayette here, we're gonna be in the 60s, 50s, highest temperature of the year, 65, can you believe it? It's gonna be beautiful. Um, a little bit of rain Friday, but like I said, I think we'll, we'll, think we'll be okay with what we've been experiencing lately. So like I promised, this is a spring break edition. Let's get into it. Uh, the Purdue Snowboarding and Ski Club is going to Jackson Hole this year, and Bittersweet. It's going to be so warm in the country that they're going to get a little bit too much warmth than they want to. So get the slopes early. They've got machines. There'll be fresh power in the morning. You have to hit the hot tub a little earlier than usual. I think they'll be okay. I think they'll, they'll make do. Um, next spring break destination, Fort Lauderdale. Forecast, paradise. It's going to be no chance of rain, 80s, 70s, every single day. As you will see here, let's get into that five-day forecast for these guys. Uh, this ridge is just really going to bring in so much warmth and it's just not going to be many, much precipitation chances in much, much of the country. Look at here. So Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all the same. Very sunny skies. And one more spring break destination, Panama City Beach. Very popular. It's real close. And it's one of those hit or miss spots. So you got to play the lottery. Sometimes they get a lot of rain. Sometimes they don't. And if you're going to PCB, guess what? You just won the lottery. It's going to be great the entire week. 70s. It's really going to be a treat. So that 12-hour drive is going to pay off for you guys that want to go there. 
So like I mentioned, just watch out for some of that rain Friday. Be careful, have a fun sp spring break, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, bye, thanks, back to you guys. Coming up, we will learn about the negative effects skipping a meal can have on students. Later in sports, we'll head out to the Mackey Arena where the Purdue men's basketball team took on Rutgers. Stay tuned. We are all Boilermakers, but we're also much more. We're history makers, exploring the farthest reaches of our universe, often when strapped to a rocket. We are hope makers, rebuilders of Haitian cityscapes who ensure they'll now withstand any disaster. We are difference makers, developers of drought-resistant crops that just might end world hunger. The fact is, what we make moves the world forward. We are Purdue, makers all. I am an American. 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 That's the way most of us put it, just matter of fact. They're plain words, those four. You could write them on your thumbnail or sweep them across a bright autumn sky. But remember, too, that they are more than just words. They are a way of life. So whenever you speak them, speak them firmly. Speak them proudly. Speak them gratefully. I am an American. I am an American. I am an American. I am an American. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. that we do and, and we try and and you yeah you have you ever dreamed of being on TV well in the Brian Lamb School of Communication we do more than that you can learn about camera operation lighting techniques live TV shows real client PSAs weekly news productions and more for more information about the video production programs visit our website or the advising office Purdue has a well-developed dining system, including five dining courts and a food court in the student union. However, not all students eat meals regularly due to busy schedules. Skipping meals may lead to inadequate nutrition and altered metabolism. Bashak reporter Sharon Kai has researched with the food science department to explore the importance of not skipping a meal. When the schoolwork is getting heavier, to keep a healthy diet is important to all college students. So if you skip lunch, you will not get enough nutrients for the whole day. And uh, your school performance, especially for the afternoon, will um, decrease. However, at Purdue, most students didn't realize the importance of lunch. Um, if I don't have any early morning classes, I'll usually grab lunch. Yeah. Breakfast is usually fairly small because I don't always get up early enough. And lunch is just uh, to buy me over. Skipping lunch is not a good habit for college students. Students who are hungry because they have skipped lunch are distracted in the classroom. Skipping meals reduces students' ability to pay attention, making less effective at school in the afternoon. Also, a long-time skipping lunch habit will lead to malnutrition, which will interfere the normal physical and mental development. I mean, I'd, I'd be pretty hungry if I missed lunch. And you can't function without food and so while you're doing work. In order to provide an easy way for students to get lunch, Purdue has a well-developed dining system, including five different dining courts and various restaurants at the underground level at Purdue Memorial Union. As you can see, there is a variety choice of different restaurants, including Italian food, American food, Mexican food, and Asian food. For a healthy lunch, it's usually considered at, as well-balanced, well-nourished lunch. Good choices for a student's lunch include raw vegetables, whole grains, and lean meat or other protein sources. Uh, for a well-balanced lunch, I usually recommend uh, high protein, uh, slow digestible starch, and uh, lower fat content. Students should avoid empty calories from in junk food 
and the snacks with high sugar or fat content, and drink plenty of water with lunch. In general, no matter what kind of reason you had, uh, skip lunch is not healthy to you. And uh, I think most interesting part is that for college students, if um, they skip uh, lunch, probably they will gain weight after all, instead of losing weight. Off-campus restaurants could also be a good choice for lunch. Some Chinese restaurants offer delivery during the lunch time. Reporting from Fast Track, I'm Sharon Tsai. Thanks, Sharon. The men's basketball team took on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights last Thursday in a matchup that was expected to be a big win for Purdue. After a strong start in the first half, the Boilers lost team after halftime, making for a close game. The game also came along with some career milestones for Coach Painter and junior A.J. Hammonds. Fast Track reporter Beth Stanley was courtside to catch the action. I'm here at Mackey Arena about 25 minutes before the game is about to start. As the second place Boilermakers are about to take on the newest addition to the Big Ten, the Scarlet Knights. There's high energy, it's 80s night here for the paint crew, so we're looking forward to a great game. After having previously defeated Rutgers 61-51 to earlier this season, Purdue went into their second matchup with hopes of a big win. Starting freshman Vince Edwards was benched temporarily after suffering from concussion-like symptoms in practice earlier that week. Replacing him was Basil Smotherman, a sophomore from Indianapolis. He said he went into the game wanting to start off strong for his teammates and his efforts did not go unnoticed. He was ready for it. I mean, he worked hard, he works hard, he works hard this offseason. So, I mean, like I always said, when you put in the work, it's going to come out. And this was his night to come out and play hard. And he play, he, he played. He always gives us energy and plays hard as he can, and that's what he did. Smotherman scored a career high of 17 points, collecting 11 points, three rebounds, two assists, and two steals in just one game. But Smotherman was not the only MVP of the game. Junior A.J. Hammonds took the court by storm, scoring his 1,000th point, though he and Isaac Haas battled foul trouble throughout the night. Tomorrow when we come to practice, like Ray was just telling us in the locker room, uh, it's a different type of animal down there in Columbus, and we're just going to have to be ready. A lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of freshmen haven't experienced this, uh, what we're going to experience on uh, Sunday. Well, I mean, it's just each guy, each, each, each player that play, we just got to be better, better, more of a focus. The team knows they have a lot of work to do before facing the Buckeyes. Purdue's strong lead in the beginning lost its momentum in the final moments of the game when they were up by only six points, making junior Raphael Davis upset over the win. I've never been this mad after a loss before. Even though the win was not as satisfying as the team had hoped for, it did come along with some career milestones, including Coach Painter's 100th win, which he says was not just to benefit him, but was for the whole team. You know, that's what, you know, there's a lot of guys in our locker room that haven't been to the NCAA tournament. And so each, you know, win that you can get it, you know, it obviously helps you. And so that's what you're, you know, you're trying to do. That, that, that's a big thing. You know, that, th those things mean a lot because especially those guys that are there like John Octius, you know, we, we have to win for him. You know, we have to win for A.J. Hammonds and Rayfield Davis. You have to win for your upperclassmen. And we don't ever get that many seniors anymore because of the way college basketball is. So we got to throw the juniors in there. But, you know, A.J. and, you know, Ray, they've, they've sacrificed a lot. And they've proven that they're a big part of our solution. And with that, Matt Painter won his 100th game. A.J. Hammonds scored his 1,000th point, And Purdue beat Rutgers 92-85 to on their way to the Big Ten tournament. For Fast Track, I'm Beth Stanley. Thanks, Beth. That's all the time we have for this week's edition of Fast Track. We want to wish Purdue students a fun and safe spring break. I'm Don Kim. And I'm Erica Lewin. We'll be back when classes resume with more stories around Purdue's campus. See you then.